AFRI undertook three workshops at Mount Temple. So the whole idea is that we'd gradually space out the students' learning through active learning methodologies and participative methods. So the first one was really focused on them understanding what AFRI's work is in relation to food sovereignty and peace building and obviously being anti-militarisation and war. But the most important thing was that students really understood what global citizenship is and how they can apply that lens in their own lives as well as in their school life and in their community life but a lens that they go out into the world with. So the most important thing was ensuring that the students left the workshops with skills that they could apply to any global justice issue that they found. In the first session we focused on their critical thinking skills, so ensuring they know how to objectively look at information. The second one that we focused on was problem solving, both individually and from a team building perspective. So ensuring that they knew communication and working together was essential to solve any problems that we face in the world or at a local and national level. The third pillar that we explored of global citizenship education was systems thinking. So ensuring that they understood that the sustainable development goals can be looked at individually, but it's very important that students know how to look at them collectively as a system as well and often students are so used to thinking of subjects and themselves as individuals but really we have to start seeing ourselves as part of a whole and that we and everything else is interconnected. In the second workshop we focused on active citizenship so it was all about how there is no point talking about all these issues if we're not going to take action so the whole idea is that students see themselves as active citizens and global citizens in the world and that they have power. Often this is really important because students are not taught that they have power yet particularly because they can't vote but this particular exercise was essential in that they saw while they might not be able to vote there are actions they can take in their everyday lives and outside of school that are really powerful whether it's the choices they make in relation to fashion or the food that they decide to eat and what we do with things like waste management. So we also did something called the inequality game, which showed how there is enough resources, particularly food in the world, but the issue is distribution. So the way the exercise works is different groups of students get different amount of sweets and they have to ask why is it they think that one group received more or less than the other. And by the end, the students all decided to evenly distribute the sweets and there was three times the amount, which is symbolic of how there's three times the amount of food in the world to feed everybody. So the students left understanding that there are core reasons behind the issues that we face in the world. And it is always about greed and inequality as opposed to a lack of. In the third workshop, we really focused on them seeing themselves as active citizens and how to put that into practice. So what the students did, followed by a story where aliens are coming to Earth, was they decided to get into groups and see how they could maybe persuade the aliens to spare the human beings. We have a very urgent challenge. A spaceship has arrived from another galaxy and is hovering above our planet. Those aboard have told us the following. They have studied us human beings, how we live and behave, and based on all the wars, the hunger, the exploitation, the greed, the inequality, the destruction of our fellow species and more, they have concluded we are not fit to run this planet. They say they have met this problem before, in other galaxies, where the top species just isn't getting it right. They pose a simple challenge. Either we prove to them that we are fit to continue in charge, or they will land and take over as the top species and run things. We will be relegated to being just another secondary species. We will be better all around for the planet. They're looking down at us now, here and everywhere on Earth. They are giving us a chance to respond. If we can come up with a plan, they will consider it. So there was lots of great projects and posters, which you can see throughout the video, but they mainly focused on ensuring that people were aware of what was going on. So education was a really big part, and this is particularly important in relation to the Sustainable Development Goal 4 and 4.7, which focuses on global citizenship education. So ensuring that we have an active and informed citizenry so that people know what they can do about the problems that we're facing and combating things like apathy and helplessness to make the world a better place. 
So by the end, we had four different brilliant plans to persuade the aliens, and I can't speak for the aliens, but if I could, I think they would spare us and give us a chance. And if only our politicians could take a leaf out of these children's books, I think we'd be in a much better place. So a key part of linking AFRI's work and the Sustainable Development Goals was asking the students to use their newly acquired critical thinking skills to think about whether there was a missing Sustainable Development Goal. Many of them came up with lots of issues like how no specific marginalised group was mentioned but also in relation to militarism there was a missing goal which was to abolish war and end the arms industry. And as we went throughout the next few workshops, many students pointed on the critical impact that militarisation has, not only on the environment, but on people as well.